Good hit. Ball is in. Their sport is volleyball. Their school is the University of Washington. Two balls above the antenna is what we're going to aim for. Although they became champions, they didn't start out that way. As little girls, their lives were typical. Their interests were varied, and sports was just one more activity in an all too busy schedule. But at some point, sports lit a fire old-fashioned words like confidence, sacrifice, and perseverance became cool, became the mantra of their daily lives. When I was playing piano, people were a little appalled at the suggestion of me being an athlete as well and even went to the extent of, you should be bathing your hands in milk. I draw, I play music, I create music, and I play volleyball. And right now, <laughs> volleyball definitely takes priority and I put most of my time into that. And if I don't have as much time for drawing or music, um, that gets sacrificed. If anyone seemed destined to be a musician, it was Jill Collimore. When my eldest daughter was taking piano lessons, Jill was there in her little cradle <laughs> um, at all the lessons. So I think music was always a part of her life. Yes, I was one of those mothers who played Mozart when I was pregnant with her. By the time she was nine, Jill was performing classical music with the Denver Philharmonic. Her older sister Jane had decided to play volleyball and was showing equally prodigious talent. So I thought I was just such a lucky parent. I had one child in one area with potential to do very well and one in another area, and I was done. I thought naively that I was done, and this would just be so easy. And I'm ashamed to say it never occurred to me that there would be crossover, and that's exactly what happened. So um, Jill fell in love with the sport of volleyball and announced that she wanted to try that. Volleyball, I think, because it's something you do with your body, it's more physical. You can't exactly pick it up when you were 30 and be right where you were when you were 16, whereas art, I, I do think you can do that, so. Imagine the time, the money, the emotion the Collimore family invested in Jill's music. And then imagine making a whole new round of sacrifices when it turned out Jill had exceptional volleyball talent, too. Add to it the uncomfortable fact that both passions included very few people who look like Jill. Whites doubted her potential. Blacks questioned her choices. Most of the time I found myself as a lone African-American amongst a lot of Caucasians and um, there are still tensions that exist in our society between certain races and maybe if uh, <laughs> maybe some women of color and vice versa don't feel completely comfortable you know being the lone person I think it's hard for anybody to stand alone. There are sometimes negative connotations for example that are attached to say a minority girl and I thought you know if she wants to do it if we have the resources to stand behind her, I'm certainly willing you know, to fight and make sure that that happens. I didn't think it was my place to tell her that this couldn't be done. So I, I've never told my kids that they can't do something. Um, they know that you may have to make sacrifices to do it or that as a family we may have to be, make sacrifices, but I thought they'll never hear from me that they can't do something. It takes a little guts then for American college kids to head into the hotbed that is Chinese volleyball. We play two in Beijing, two in Shanghai. We're going to play their NCAA champion, their runner-up, and then we'll play two teams from their national team. In just nine days, Courtney and her University of Washington teammates will depart for China, home of the best volleyball players in the world. Feel free to speak with people. They're going to want to practice English. Be 
picture of us in front of the countdown to the Olympics. It says like 786 days, so many hours, minutes, seconds. I can't believe we're here. Weeks of practice and months of anticipation. Now everybody defense. They are finally in China on the most remarkable road trip of their athletic careers. The Chinese, of course, will have home court advantage. I, f I feel like I want to jump on the rooftops. And what a home it is. The world's most populous nation, steeped in history and mystery. An irresistible playground for girls who love to play. This is 100% real. On the great journey. That's an adventure. It is. You see that, Mom? It goes fast and then. That is so hard. How much farther? Carpe diem. Save the day. Is there ice cream up here? Yeah, Dila! Great water to China! side of the world but we're playing volleyball so that's the deal but don't get caught up in things you can't get caught up in the final game is furious Both teams play as if it matters. The decisive rally includes a crystal save, a Courtney set, and a kill by Jill. The first generation to grow up under Title IX has the luxury of taking a lot for granted. You know, there's a little bit of this cliche that, you know, in the 70s we accepted it or we tolerated Title IX, and in the 80s we started to accept it, and in the 90s we embraced it, and in the new millennium we celebrated it. And there's probably some truth to that. But frankly, any celebration might best be tempered. Tempered by the fact that few of us who pay attention to sports pay all that much attention to women's sports. Let the games begin. Few of us fully understand or embrace all that sports really means to our daughters. Being aggressive is good. How many of us speak up when our schools let Title IX requirements slide or when politicians grumble about weakening its provisions? Okay. 